Hello Geneva, and welcome to Officially Speaking. I'm your host, Kevin Starr. Each month we'll sit down with an elected official from our city council or an appointed member from our volunteer boards or commissions. Joining us today is City Council Second Ward Alderman Don Cummings. Thanks for joining us, Don. Thank you, Kevin. It's nice to be here. Why don't you start off our show by telling us a little bit about yourself? Um, sure. I am uh, married to Jean Cummings. She's a flight attendant with American Airlines. We have three children. Uh, one just graduated from Georgetown and is working for Deloitte in the uh, D.C. metro area. We have two daughters, both in college, uh, one at Coe College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and the other is at Fordham University uh, in New York. Um, I grew up in the area, in Wayne, just north of St. Charles. We moved here um, probably 1969 or so, uh, okay. my family and I. I'm a graduate of the University of Wisconsin-Madison um, uh, and have lived, or my family and I have lived in Geneva since 1991. Um, I've been somewhat active in Geneva from probably the mid-90s on. I was on the uh, library board for about 12 years. Um, I was uh, uh, on the Park Foundation board for two or three years and on the board of Day One Network uh, for two years. And so I try to keep active uh, here in Geneva. Seems like you've been quite involved in the community so far. Yes, yes. You were appointed to your seat in 2012. What made you interested in serving on the city council? You know, there are a couple reasons. I, I do believe that after a certain number of years that someone serves on a, on a board, um, taking a seat on a board, that the, it, the person really owes it to the community or to the organization to go ahead and move um, off that board and let somebody else on. It's very difficult for people to run against an incumbent. I don't know what that number of years is, but it seemed to make sense that after 12 or 13 years on the library board, I was probably due to move somewhere else. Uh, when Bob Piper stepped down, um, I, I tossed my hat in the ring for city council. Why city council? Um, you know, it just gives me another way, another venue to work with an organization that I love. I love the, the city. We've raised three kids here. We live here. We're pretty dug in. Um, and it, it really gave me a nice opportunity to uh, go in a different direction for the same general organization. Don, tell our viewers, where is the second ward generally? What issues are really important to your constituents? Uh, generally, the second ward, actually, the second ward is, is probably one of the easiest wards to uh, delineate. Um, it starts at the corner of Western Avenue and the tracks, and then goes west and south from there. So it includes Eagle Brook, Randall Square, and Sterling Manor, essentially. And what issues are important to your constituents, do you feel? You know, in the middle of winter, which is when we're filming this, uh, every year the, the most important issue seems to be uh, coyotes, or at least one of the most important issues seems to be coyotes. Um, we live in a uh, suburban to rural area out here. When the snow gets deep and the coyotes can't find the food that they normally eat, they begin looking for food that they may not normally eat, uh, like dogs. And, um, and so that's, a, that's an issue. Uh, we have a small dog. It's, it's, um, it is frustrating to have to go out with the dog when the dog has to go to the bathroom. Um, but I, I think that that's really uh, the answer um, for the coyotes. Um, other issues uh, that, that I hear about, um, people are worried about the speeding in Eagle Brook on, on Fargo. That tends to be right around when the school year begins. Um, people are rushing to and from school. Um, cut through traffic in Randall Square seems to be an issue. Um, garbage dumpsters and, and loose garbage in Randall Square in the shopping area seems to be a problem. Um, occasionally speeding in Sterling Manor uh, is a problem. Those are those are probably the most frequent issues that we that we hear about. This has been one of the worst winters on record. <laughs> How do you feel the city has done with snow plowing to date? 
I think I think the city has done well. Um, I I live in Eagle Brook. I live on Fairway Circle, and we get. Um, I wouldn't, wouldn't say that we're the last to be plowed, but the city begins with the major thoroughfares and then moves to uh, the minor and smaller thoroughfares and the cul-de-sacs and stuff like that. And so um, it is frustrating, and I am sometimes out of the house at quarter of five in the morning to meet a group and go running, um, to back out and not only have a difficult time getting out of my driveway, but a difficult time on Fairway Circle and a difficult time on, on Fargo and on Kime Circle. Um, but it makes sense to me that we want to plow the roads first that will uh, affect the most number of people and then move down from there. So I think the city's gonna, done a good job. I know that there's uh, some criticism out there um, about it. I guess given unlimited resources, um, we could hire an unlimited number of trucks with an unlimited number of drivers and we could keep the streets clear nonstop. They, nonstop right down to the pavement, but somewhere in between not plowing at all and um, that sort of uh, absurd side of, of hiring all those people is the right balance and I think we've, we've hit that this year. So we just talked about snow plowing and now we're going to talk from a budget perspective. Are you concerned about unplanned costs such as overtime or the need to purchase additional salt? You know, I do get concerned about that. I, I worry any time there's a variance, um, especially obviously to the high side, but any time there's a variance um, in what we're spending versus the budget. Some of the things I'm sure seem obvious, um, things like salt or overtime for plowers, um, uh, that's inevitable. If you have an anomaly with the snowfall, then you'll have an anomaly in the budget with people that take care of the snowfall. Um, the things that we can affect, um, and we can't affect the weather yet, uh, the things that we can affect are the things that I am really interested in, in focusing on. Yeah. Budget season is here, and you've done this now for a couple years. What areas of the budget are important to you when you go through this planning process? Uh, I guess the obvious area is anything that the, I really like to focus on the biggest figures. Um, otherwise, we, we're, we're sort of arguing um, philosophically and, and not practically. Um, so probably like all the other aldermen, um, I do want to focus on the biggest numbers. I do want to see the technology enhancements that we're making uh, the money that we're putting into technology now, I would like to see that pay off in the future, either through, well, through better efficiency. Either that would be uh, less staffing or fewer hours, fewer hours by the, the current staff, um, uh, a more efficient system for the public interacting with us, whether it's pulling permits or uh, going through any other process they have to go through with the city. Um, but I, I, I do want to see a return on the on the technology um, investments that we're making. Talk about some of the big issues that have come across the city council. You know, whether it be in the last few months or maybe some issues that you might coming across your, this dais right here, maybe mm -hmm. in the future. Um, you know, the big one uh, every year, especially in a poor economy, uh, is is taxes. Um, is the money getting spent well? And sometimes I compare it to going to a restaurant. I, you know, I don't care if it's a, a place for an Italian beef or some, you know, ten-course French. If I don't feel like I'm getting value, then I feel as if I'm wasting my money. And I want the people in Geneva to feel like they're getting a value for what they're paying. And I know the economy's tough. Um, but I also think right now people are a little bit frustrated and, and they don't feel as if they're getting a value. Um, bigger issues I would like to see, and the city's aware of this, economic development is, has been on top of this for years, but um, residents pay a high percentage of the overall tax, a lot of the tax burden sits on the residents, a higher percentage than ought to. And so we do need more commercial and we do need more industrial. And how do we attract that to the city to take some of the tax burden off the residents? And I think that'll, 
That'll continue to be important, has been important, will be important. Um, more recently, the issue uh, last summer, uh, I believe it came up, or last spring, the issue of food carts, temporary, uh, temporary sales. So it could be a food cart, it could be a food truck. Um, I like the idea, but I also don't want to hurt our current business owners. I wouldn't want a, a, a coffee cart setting up in front of Graham's 318 or Caribou or something. Um, and so how do we balance the needs of the current business owners with the perceived need of the residents of Geneva? Um, I have seen a lot of food carts in Washington, D.C., for example, um, and at, at University of Wisconsin-Madison out on the mall, uh, food carts. And it's a terrific way to get um, a real diversity of food into an area. Um, but that has to be examined really closely, I think, and really carefully. Okay. What goals would you like to see the city accomplish in both short-term and long-term as part of the strategic planning process? Um, I w there are a number of things. I would like to see more public areas in the city of Geneva. I love Island Park and the fact that there are plays and music down there. I wish that we had more of that or maybe heavier use of that. Um, I wish there was more outdoor seating at the restaurants. Um, I just got back from two weeks in Argentina and it is, Buenos Aires is very similar to Paris. It's a cafe society. A lot of the public is out having coffee and dinner and dessert out on the sidewalk and um, I think that that brings a warm feel to a community. Um, Geneva is a little bit restricted with that with setbacks and pedestrian right-of-way and but I I think there's probably some opportunity there. Another area that has been discussed and not really approached by the Tri-Cities is a heavier heavier recreational use of the river and if you look downriver to Yorkville uh, for example, um, they have, there's heavier recreational use, there's kayaking, some kayaking stores have opened, they put in some rapids. Um, in the ideal world, I would love to see somebody be able to kayak from St. Charles all the way down to Yorkville or beyond or something. Um, I think we have a beautiful river, I think it's an underutilized asset, however. Um, so I would like to see some, something along those lines developed. One of the issues that I think continues to be a problem in the city of Geneva, despite the fact that there are over 20,000 people living here, is citizen partic participation in various, um, whether it's service organizations or nonprofits or municipal entities. But it, it seems as if um, the same names keep popping up, and I think my gosh, out of 20-something thousand people, uh, there must be a lot of good ideas out there. And I would love to see more people coming to the table, whether it's a group like uh, the Geneva Rotary Club or the Lions or Kiwanis or a group like the Park Foundation Board or the Park District Board or City Council or Library. Um, but there are a number of organizations out there, uh, Geneva Beautification, for example, that are doing some really neat things kind of under the radar um, that could really use help. Part of the problem is that people aren't aware of some of the need. Maybe number one, they aren't aware of the organization. The number two, maybe not aware of the need that the organizations have. And so the council has in its strategic planning talked about um, a citizen sort of one, one place a person could go and learn about different volunteer opportunities, where the needs are in the community to help. I always feel as if people have, a lot of people have, um, they may have time but no money, or they have money but they don't have time. And there are some people that don't have time or money, and there are some that have both. But from those different groups, I think, if we can find a spot for them to help, either financially or uh, time-wise, putting in hours, um, it only adds to the community. And, and a community that I, that I love and I, I think is doing very well 
but could also probably do even better. Obviously, there are a lot of, of difficult and challenging issues that are always brought before the city council. But what do you enjoy most about being an alderman? You know, I like, I like being engaged in uh, what's going on. And, and uh, I like the strategic level that we have in the guidance uh, of the city. I, I, I think that's my favorite thing is that hopefully 20 or 30 years from now, the little and some big strategic decisions that we're making now will be for the betterment of Geneva uh, down the road. What is the most challenging aspect of the position and what are some things that residents might not be aware of that comes with the territory of being an alderman? Um, of being an alderman specifically, I would say I was surprised at the steepness of the learning curve uh, when issues come up. We get, and it's available on the city website each uh, before city council and before committee of the whole, we get a packet on a late on Thursday afternoon. And that packet of information, PDFs, can be 10 or 20 pages or it can be three or 400 pages. And some of the, um, some of the issues are really complex, really complex. And I think I, I can't learn all this between um, Thursday night and Monday night when decision making time comes. Um, and that's, that's frustrating. And I'm emailing people who do know and asking questions and that sort of thing. That may be something that people aren't, uh, aren't aware of. Um, another thing is, uh, is that a lot of the issues that come up are not binary issues, binary, transparent, black and white, easy issues. Uh, they are somewhere along this continuum and, and they're, they are difficult. And, and where I may see the answer as being fairly obvious, somebody sitting across from me may think my decision making is fairly opaque and mostly wrong. And, and so that, that seems to be uh, something that maybe not a lot of people are aware of, the, the, the complexity of the um, decisions. Uh, I wish they were more clear cut. I wish they were more binary, but they're not. What are your future plans? Uh, do you see, plan to seek re-election in the 2015 election? Uh, as of right now, I would say yes. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what will happen between now and then. Um, the kids are out of the house. We enjoy traveling. My wife's a flight attendant, as I had said. Um, we are enjoying taking a little bit longer time away from home. I don't have the ability to not work, but I can work from another location. And so we're just starting to take advantage of that. And so um, it really depends on, on whether I think I will be physically present. But right now, I would say yes, I will run. Yeah. And as we wind down, we appreciate your time here today. Absolutely. You're very welcome. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to come sit down with you. Great. What do you think makes Geneva special or unique? Oh, my gosh. Um, Geneva has a cohesiveness that, that other towns around here don't have. I look at some of the towns near us that have such a struggle to get um, something similar to Geneva beautification up and going. And we're very fortunate. We have a very engaged, uh, I, it's a smaller number, but a smaller number of very engaged people in Geneva. I would love to see that number grow. But the work that the people that are, are working that work that they're doing, I think, is, is really impressive. And it's what, it's sort of the frosting on the cake. It's what brings Geneva up, you know, over and above some of the other towns. The schools are good, the community is safe, the, um, it's nice looking, the landscaping is good, the streetscaping is good. Um, the home values are <laughs> as well maintained as they can be, I think. Um, 
I am very impressed with the community. I'm very happy we live here. My kids uh, had a great education at the schools. Um, I think there's a whole host of things that make Geneva really special. That concludes our show for today. We'd like to thank Alderman Cummings for his time and his insight into the City Council. We also thank you for tuning in. Let's Tune again fun. next month. We invite another member from the City Council to participate in Officially Speaking. Thank you. Thank you.